say bananas, you say peppers. And you guys, today we are gonna be talking about one of my all time favorite life subject matters. We have another stationary haul. And you guys, I don't know what it is. I swear, I always end up in this room filming a stationary haul, like in this weird sun time of day. It's always like the sun is like setting and what is this lighting? And I don't know, sometimes when I'm filming, I always think like the lighting looks worse on the little monitor than it does in real life. So we're gonna roll with it. Also, I'm sorry that my hair looks like a dying plant. It really does. Yesterday, it was very sassy. It was very cute. It was very ringlety, magic-y. Is magic -y a word? Probably not. Very curly. And today, it looks like this. I thought when I like cut all my hair off that the curl would just stay in place for days, but it, no, at least not in summertime in Texas. Where's Kermit? Come on now. What are, what are you doing? You're my little buddy. That's better. Okay. Today, I'm yelling. <laughs> well, I'm, I don't just yell today. I yell every day. But we have a brand new box of stationary goodies from one of my favorite places to get stationary, which is Jet Pens. They have a huge selection. This is not sponsored. I ordered all of this myself, but they have a huge selection and they also make these YouTube videos like once a week and it is like the direct opposite of what I do here like it's very calming very like ASMR like very unlike me just screaming and yelling about pens and pencils for 45 minutes but hey we're gonna try a little something new today you guys because I saw a couple of other YouTubers do this and I really liked it so I'm I'm borrowing the idea. Today, there is gonna be something hidden in this video, somewhere in the screen. If you watch the video and you find the hidden item, the first person I see comment a timestamp with the hidden item, I'm gonna pin your comment. If you're not subscribed already and you'd like to be, hit the button down below, become a member of the Banana Peppers Squad, and also, if you just interact with this video in any way. I know that this is an annoying thing for me to say and ask, but it really, really does help. So if you guys wanna leave this video a like or leave me a comment down below to read. I love the comments that I get from you guys, honestly, because I just really appreciate the amount of you guys who say that you just come here to hang out with me and it's like a nice place of like, you know, friendship, catch up energy, catch up energy. That's what I have today. Anyway, you guys, let's just get into this stuff and the verse the first it's a different number the first thing that I'm gonna pull out of here today is I need a knife there we go Ugh. I found I did not I was I was about to say I found some strength I don't know that I did Ooh. okay so I was gonna say the first thing that I was going to pull out of here today are these but then I remember I kind of have something new anyway if you guys do not buy another thing that I ever try and influence you to buy. Okay, buy these. If you love stationery, these are my favorite notebooks. I don't understand how like the stationery world is not raving about how amazing these are. They are by the brand, I think it's um, technically Lil Hit Lab. Let me put this box down so that I can get closer to you. But uh, La, La Hit Lab, I'm not saying that right, but this is the Aqua Drops notebook. These literally inspire me to accomplish more things. You can open the rings up, you can refill them with different types of paper. I have been using these now for so long. I'm always scared they're gonna stop making them, but you can use markers, pins, even some of those like, you know, the pins that like tend to bleed a lot. Like I used one of those gold markers yesterday from the last like Royal Core stationery haul. I don't remember what brand, but like pins that you would think would bleed through the paper do not on these and they're just so fun everything about them is amazing so I got a fuchsia one like this I think last year and I have used it up and I have filled it as far as I could fill it so I got another fuchsia one because I really feel like this color is re-entering my life as like one of my favorite colors. This used to be like, I used to have all fuchsia everything and then I, I don't know, I just stopped 
fuchsia-ing as much, but now fuchsia is back. And then I bought one of my other favorite colors, which is clear. It looks white but it's clear. I'm gonna try and do some research, honestly, because I feel like it would be so much fun if I could find a punch that I could punch like this amount of holes or something, because I feel like that would be so much more fun to customize. So I got two of them. I think that they're around like $4 a piece. The next thing that I got that I forgot that I got that I thought would be so wow, that I thought would be so fun for our stationary videos is this, which is called the original coloring oversize. Now this is pretty cute that this is called oversized because this to me is like a miniature of something. It's supposed to be for swatching different kinds of inks, different kinds of pens. And I was like, how perfect is this to use for stationary videos? So it has a nice, I don't exactly know what the material is, but it almost feels like that like super nice, like recycled paper kind of texture. Then it's just blank on the inside. And these are the sheets, they're not, cardstock, but they are definitely thicker than, you know, like notebook paper, what I normally use to swatch. It's like a nice little, you know, if I was like maybe a detective or something, um, but I'm just swatching pins. All right, up next is a stack of things that all correspond to one thing. And you guys, I'm very excited. I think that this is all it. And I hope that I'm gonna know how to do this. I've watched some tutorials, but this is my first ever official traveler's notebook. I think we've had a discussion about traveler's notebooks before because when I first thought I was gonna start a Bujo years ago, I thought about starting one in a traveler's notebook, but I am a maximalist through and through. So normally nothing on the smaller side appeals to me. It's just bigger is always better in my opinion. So I've never gotten into a traveler's notebook, but this was just so weird. And you guys, I think it's because it reminded me of Uncommon Objects, which is my heaven on earth. It is my favorite place to go. It is where 99.9, .9, except for Kermit, and me. Pretty much everything else in this room came from Uncommon Objects. They are an antique, an antique store. Antiques and oddities in Austin. And uh, I have not been able to be there since like January of 2020. This is the longest I've ever gone in my life without going there. And so this just had a flair and I'll show you why. So first of all, let's open the cover, which is also part of this series called B-Sides and Rarities. And look at that. So Traveler's Notebook is actually a particular brand. It's from Japan. I don't see any other information about the brand or anything, but look at this, it's orange. <gasps> so this is gonna be our cotton cover, which first of all, love that. I love the touch, the feel of cotton, the fabric of our lives. If you're 900 years old like me, you probably also remember that jingle. Oh, this is gonna be interesting for me to figure out. Uh, so here it is. Does this, I don't, there's a flap. I'm confused by the flap. This is our beautiful cover. And you guys, you can go right on down the rabbit hole of Traveler's Notebooks. There's people that make custom Traveler's Notebooks. Every theme you can imagine. Three card slots, the confusing flap that I don't know the meaning of presently. And we have a zipper pocket back here. Now, um, I did expect for there to be a rubber band here in the middle. So this is about to get very exciting. Anyway. Typically what you do is you get a cover of some kind. It looks like mostly there's two different sizes of traveler's notebooks. I think there's one that's kind of, it cuts off here. So it's like a smaller rectangle. And then there is this size. I don't know which one is like typically more popular in the community of um, traveler's notebooks. And so this was like all part of the same collection, which was all called rarities and B-sides. So it's all, weird types of paper. So this first one is called a letter pad, which honestly, letter pad doesn't sound that weird, but we're gonna get into the weirder stuff, okay? This is like, this is like the tame one, um, cause they're all made out of weird paper. We're gonna, we're gonna get to it. So, um, letter pad, and it has this little hand on the front writing a letter. <gasps> Ooh, this is interesting. So, 
This whole notebook, the front of it has lined paper. And then on the other side of the lined paper, it's all graph paper. And this does feel like pretty standard paper. So I think it's just, uh, you know, the, the, the front and back of it is different and that's what makes it B-sides and rarities. I had a phone call, but now I'm back. Uh, all right, so that, you know, not that weird. This one, a little weirder. This is called Super Lightweight Paper. And so I think that this is gonna be maybe like the look of vellum, you know, that paper that you can like see through, but it is supposed to be oil proof. So they say that this paper is even thinner and lighter than their normal lightweight paper refill. I don't know what that feels like. I've never had that in my life, but they say the paper itself does not allow for oil to penetrate easily. So it's harder for it to, you know, smear when you're still trying to use a fountain pen or something like that. Ew! It has like a feel to the side of the paper. Oh, that does feel, it feels weird. I probably shouldn't be doing that. I'm probably about to give myself a very nasty paper cut. So here it is. Ooh, what's that a picture of? I literally can't tell. What is that? It looks like a scale. Oh, it's a scale. Cause it's lightweight. Ah, okay. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Ooh, wait, do they all? No, this one doesn't. Oh, this one has like a little picture frame in the front. F the font? A, pic a picture fame in the front. Um, that is pretty fascinating. So yeah, you guys, this is like fragile baby wing paper. Baby wing. I was trying to say cherub. Cherub baby wing angel wing paper. Look at that. <gasps> I can see you. Through I actually really can't. I can't see you through the paper, but like definitely light does come through the paper, which I'm conflicted about, right? Do you see what I'm saying? This is the stupid stuff I do, okay? I get stuff like that, like like this, and I'm like, oh, this is special paper. But then I just put it in my desk drawer and I don't use it. That's what happened to all my bujos, my failed bujos. And look at this, I just creased that one. I know that that's probably gonna upset somebody out there. I'm a mess, you guys. Uh, okay, so this one I was honestly on the fence about getting because I didn't really know like when I would use the contents of it. But at first this was gonna be like the only one I wasn't gonna get. And then I felt like, why not just complete the collection Pokemon? Gotta catch them all style. And I also really like the cover of this one because it has a little cow on it. I don't know why the cow gets this, but this is called a message card. And it has these, I think little perforated. Yeah, so it says seven designs, five sheets. So you get 35 sheets in here, but they are perforated tear out message cards. So let's, this one has the frame again. Thank you, have a nice trip, have a good day. They're all perforated. And then the other side is like blank, which this is most of the reason why I got it. I really felt like maybe I could use these in some kind of like junk journal kind of capacity in the future. So it's those designs in the front and then these designs on the back, which once again say, have a nice trip, have a good day. Oh, I really do like that. Um, the little train down there on the bottom. So it's pretty cute. I mean, I could see myself using this more like if I was still in school in some capacity, like maybe if you wanted to like leave your friend a note or something or pass notes during class. That's what I, people don't do that anymore, you guys. And well, I don't know, do you do that? Is there, do people still write with their hands? I mean, I'm just joking, but I, I thought about that the other day. Cause I'm like, you know what? I bet people don't like pass notes in class anymore because everyone has cell phones now. <laughs> See, like I'm an ancient person. I mean, text messaging was just a more expensive, like rare thing. That is how ancient I am. It's like the land before time or some kind of other dinosaur sentiment. Text messages cost, I think like 50 cents a piece back in the day, 50 cents to send and 50 cents to open. Like, which I'm like, that just sounds so silly now, but like, oh my God. So we wrote notes and passed notes. Anyway, sticker release paper. This one I thought would be very, very handy. A very Andy Warhol with the banana on the front. I really like that. Oh, I know what I was gonna say about it is, um, you know, once again, for like junk journaling, I like to keep packaging stickers from PR, cosmetic products, stuff like that. But I don't always have like 
I don't always have like the layout or something, I guess, configured. So I just felt like this would help me to like throw things away faster and be more organized because if I want to just like keep a sticker off of a PR package, I won't be tempted to like keep more than I need. Does that make sense? I don't know. Also, I saw the other day they had like classic Disney cartoon stickers on the bananas. And I was like, ah, I saw the little hummingbird from Pocahontas. And that was like a flashback. And I was like, I wanted to like peel it off. But see, that's what I'm saying. I didn't really have a place to stick it. But this like, basically, it's like really shiny. I mean, once again, if you're an ancient person like me, you know, it's like the old Lisa Frank sticker collection books or whatever, where you could trade stickers with your friends, like, you know, the, the leading currency in 1993, Lisa Frank stickers. So you would like put them in an album and trade the stickers with your friends. Um, okay, up next, the accordion paper. You guys, this could have been a whole dang separate video by itself. The paper unfolds like a map. And I'll show this example to you guys on the back because this honestly would be so cute to do a really many scrapbook, you know? Like if you were going on a really short trip or, you know, like a long weekend or something, you could just write about your experiences, you know, post some pictures on here and then just fold it right back up and put it in your traveler's notebook. I thought that was cute. And one last thing, which this, in my opinion, is the most exciting and the most weird. This is washable paper. It even says it right here too. This paper is made from the same material as a laundry tag. So honestly, I'm kind of sad I didn't get two of these because how fun would it be to like unstaple the notebook? Because obviously like the cover is just normal paper, but like, could I wash this and then get a bunch of like scrumpled textured paper? I love textures, you guys, but I just love like the notebook in the washing machine. This is a really pretty bright blue shade as well. You guys, this is so interesting how most of these traveler's notebooks have this little picture frame in the front and uh, some of them don't. But honestly, yeah, I really want to wash this paper because on the surface, it feels like a normal piece of paper. But you know what they're talking about? Like the, um, like the clothing tags in your jeans or whatever, where you wash it and then it gets that cool texture okay why is one of these that's so oh my gosh because <gasps> i don't think this is meant to fit in there i was like wait why is this like different than this but i guess that's why that this is called like a traveler's or a letter pad so it looks more like a pad i don't know if that's technically supposed to go inside a traveler's notebook but you guys now i have to really figure it out because i thought somewhere in here we were gonna get a rubber band because there's like a method, and if you know anything about traveler's notebooks, I'm sure this is a very boring, very bad explanation, but you like thread these books through like the spine. Like I think you in fact, like maybe layer them like that or something. And then you put the rubber band in there so that it sits in the cover. You know what I mean? Like that. So I don't know. I'm gonna have to see if I can find the rubber band because right now I have a bunch of separate little notebooks and a flappy cotton cover. This is another thing that uh, I am looking forward to not only having this, but also the refills that hopefully I will be able to find. It's called one patch stamp and I've seen people use it in the literal sense and also in the decorational sense. And so what this is, let me see if I can get an up close clip for you guys down here. What this is, is a repair technique Technically, that's what it is. If you have like, you know, notebook paper or something and the notebook paper hole gets ripped, it's like a reinforcer. But I've seen people use this in the scrapbooking capacity as well um, to use it. I think we literally just press down. <gasps> oh my gosh, these are completely clear. So hopefully you guys can see that. So um, anyway, what I'm trying to say is 
I've seen people use it in a decorative sense as well. There are refills for this thing that are not clear. I've seen some cute ones that are just like miscellaneous designs. Like some of them look a little bit neon and stuff. Um, the ones I'm really looking for look like donuts. So it's so cute for scrapbooking if you wanted to like, you know, put, look, I'll see. Can I just as an example, go ahead and conjoin this little alcohol pad. Oh, that was like a really bad job, but see, just for reference. So now this is like stuck in there. If I wanted to commemorate this little hand sanitizer wipe for all of time. So honestly, you guys, it feels like it really sticks. I don't know what kind of magic adhesive is here. I love this brand too. Honestly, Kokio. I know I never pronounce it right. I have a lot of stationary items from them and I've never been disappointed. All right, up next something that is kind of the same yet very different and I hope that I selected the right one. I think that this is from like a smaller indie brand as well that it seems like maybe Jet Pens just started carrying. This brand is Jam Studio and they had a million of these and I was like so torn what color to select. Anyway, so what this is meant to be is a sticker collection album yet different than the sticker release paper thing I just showed you because this is supposed to hold, you guys know when we've done the Yes Style stationary videos before and I get so many cute sheets of stickers and I have a whole drawer full of adorable sheets of stickers and I feel like I just don't ever like use them as much as I would like to because like, I know I'm not going to use a whole sheet of stickers all at once. And then what's going to happen to them. So I'm going to go over there really quick and see if I can get a couple sheets of stickers. And I'm hoping, I don't know, I was hoping that this was the right size. They had a couple of different sizes, but I just, I don't know. I didn't know what, which one to pick. And then in the back, there's like a nice little, one of these almost like pencil bag things as well, which I think this would be great for holding, you know, some of my vintage like Sandy Lion stickers and stuff we've looked at together that are from the 90s where I just have those like one like little miscellaneous square sheets of stickers. So let me get some stickers. Oh, look, this is a good example right here. I have these. These are some of my favorite stickers in the world. And I only use them for very, very special occasions, but they are my frog stickers. They're vintage Sandy Lion. So look at that. I want to put these like right front and center. I'm going to do that. I'm just going to do that. These are my favorite stickers. And if I was going to be able to see any sticker through the clear front, I would want to see my frogs. I just grabbed the first little handful. So it's so funny because literally all of these different um, stickers, I mean, and they're obviously all different brands, but this one, is a little bit wider than this one. And I don't just mean the packaging. I mean like the actual like clear thing on the inside. Um, some are wider, some are thinner. Uh, so let's see, I really, oh, these are so cute. Ah! Um, see, that's what I'm saying. I have so many adorable stickers and I literally just like forget the ones I have because I never look at them. Okay, so honestly, I was hoping that um, some of my Halloween stickers would fit. So let's see. I don't think it's going to fit you guys, but I'm going to take it out. I'm just going to show you guys what's going on down here. Oh, these stickers are so adorable. The ghost is my favorite. I definitely got this for the ghost. Yeah, that does not fit. It is unfortunately like a whole skeleton too skinny or too wide. I don't know what I'm trying to say. But look at that. Oh my God, that would be so adorable if it fits. So hopefully I have some stickers that will fit. If not, I mean, obviously the Sandy Lion ones fit. So I could just like, you know, stack them and put several of them in one column instead of just like a whole sheet. I mean, I'm sure somewhere in my vast collection of stickers, I have some stickers that fits. Let me scoot all of these beautiful stickers 
out of the way. Finally, we have some pens to swatch, which you guys, you gotta let me know if you've ever seen these before. They are a Sharpie collection and these are called Mystic Gems. I am very excited because these are the ultra fine. You guys have to let me know what is the difference between ultra fine and the Sharpie pins. I still remember when Sharpie pins, like the Sharpie writing pins first came out and that was a magical experience. For a long time, all I used in my college classes was Sharpie pins. So let's do some swatches. Here is this beautiful, I wish that they had like different names for the gyms. So there, see, I mean, there cannot be that much difference between that tip and, ooh, I gotta write a lot smaller. Oh my gosh. <gasps> That's so weird. It's like so, I guess I just didn't write well there. Oh, look at that. I pressed harder and it looked more colorful. Here is this kind of blue periwinkle shade. I'm just gonna do some squiggles because we have a lot to get through. Oh, that almost looks purple. Let's do a purple one right next to it in comparison. I bet this is gonna swatch a lot. Yeah, look, that's a lot deeper of a shade. It's like definitely an eggplant kind of shade but i swear it almost looks like even i don't know different on camera than in real life up next we have this kind of green okay there's that you know what maybe it is looking a little bit deeper because the paper is like artistic in quality that's a really pretty color does artistic in quality does that make sense it definitely feels like something you could I mean, I think that's what it's for. So you could swatch like watercolors or quill ink if you've got ink like that. Um, there's like a green. Here's this blue, which I'm gonna swatch that right next to this blue because those look so similar. Oh my gosh. <gasps> I'm glad you guys can see that on camera because almost like with the naked eye, it's like so light. It looks invisible. As always, you guys, my hands are dry and crusty and disgusting looking. See, look, that when I'm writing with it looks really flamingo pink, but I would kind of think that this would be doesn't this look like it should be the color I just wrote with versus this one? What a weird world we live in, you guys. Um, but look at that. That is like much brighter. We have lavender. Swatch that. That looks really pretty. I should have swatched it next to this other purple shade. So there we go. That's the two purples, which they don't look that purpley to me. And then this is yellow, you guys. Get ready for an invisible pin. Yellow is like always an interesting color to me that they include. Cause most of the time, it shows up pretty good there, but it looks really invisible. Like, look, I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like here. Cause maybe this looks more like the naked eye. No, it's still, it's still, you guys are really able to see in real life. I can't see it that well. Up next is a couple things that I don't know that we're gonna get to in this video because I feel like this literally could be a whole video in and of itself. And I know this video is so long already. So I'm gonna show you guys these two items, actually these three items back to back. And I feel, cause I have like other things that go with these things. Does that make sense? Probably not. Cause I'm not even showing you what they are yet. Look at how well they wrap everything though, you guys. I wanted to, to try a couple fountain pens. And there's been a couple of inks that I've really been interested in for a long time. And so that is what this is. I think that they're called fountain pens. For the life of me, I don't really know what is the difference between a fountain pen and a quill pen. This is a tool to fill up. You guys can probably see what it is, but I have to be careful with the words that I say. Um, but it is a tool to fill inks into fountain pens. And so I got two different kinds of inks. This is literally called writer's blood. I like that. I don't know. Ooh, look at that. That is like a big old bottle of ink. I don't know if there's any way I can just like swatch it for you guys really quick. <gasps> Ooh, look, I'm just gonna dip my finger. This is like probably really gross to do, but we're just, we're gonna do it. Just so you guys can see a little swatch. Ooh, that is like a beautiful cranberry color. Look at that. So I'm very excited. So the thing that I have on the way is I have some empty fountain pen, like the actual pen with the nib. I have that coming so I can actually, you know, not just 
stick my fingers in the ink to write with maybe. And then this one is very exciting. I have obviously upcoming Halloween vlogoween things coming. So this is kind of for that. And I think that this actually comes with a pen. This is from the brand Noodlers Ink. I think that's the brand Noodle Noodlers, which this is hilarious because I love catfish so much. And there's a catfish, right? Because I guess catfish noodler, you know, that's how you catch a catfish. You go catfish noodling. Very funny. Um, this is a giant bottle of ink, you guys. Giant. I are they always this big? I could write the history of the world and still not run out of these inks. This is crazy. So um, this is actually so cool. I think it is called, um, yeah, this is called the Blue Ghost ink. And uh, so this writes completely clear. Under white light, it looks like nothing, but under black light, it glows. So I thought that would be so fun. And I just love the fact that it's called Ghost Ink. Perfect for Halloween. Last two pins and thank goodness that it is because as always, my camera is it. I just learned this. I know I just said this in a Graveyard Girl video, but it, the fact blows my mind. I feel like all these cameras is a lie. Um, Cause this whole time I never understood why every camera I've ever bought or every camera I've ever owned will not film past 30 minutes. And it always shuts down and it's claiming it's overheating every camera every brand for the last 11 years and i had no idea it was like because of like some kind of tariff that these companies would have to pay for it to be classified as like a video camera versus like a dslr that can film and i'm like so they they like limit how much you can film without it overheating it's so annoying but i feel like less goofy now and i guess honestly I should just learn to talk less and just film videos that are less than 30 minutes. That that could also, I could also do that. Anyway, now that I've talked for five additional minutes, these are the last two pins and I don't remember the technical name of them, but I bought them because I liked the fancy French title. I'm like back on all my like obsessed, ob obsession with French history every day on YouTube. I'm just like, oh yes tell me more stories. They are, I'm not gonna butcher that. I'm not gonna say that. A day of something. I don't know. And I bought, I don't remember what color. Ew! You know what? I just saw, oh, I just stabbed my intestines with my chair. Don't do that. I found my little order thing. So maybe I'll be able to tell you guys. Oh, okay. So these are the colors that I thought I was buying. Plum is this one. And then this one was called blue green. See, a lot of times I don't remember like why I picked the certain colors or the certain pins that I did, but usually it's just as I'm browsing on the website, some name or something really calls to me and that's why I pick the things that I do. And sometimes I get the colors and then I'm like, okay, I bought pink and green. Why did I do that? But it's technically because it's called pink and I thought it looked very fuchsia or plum and I thought it looked very fuchsia and blue green. I always love the color blue green as well. I don't feel like you see many things in blue green. I really love the color of both of these pens and I feel like like early on in my stationary videos, I would not like pins like this as much where it is a gel ink pin, but the tip of it, like the writing experience feels very much like a ballpoint pin. But the more that I've gotten into stationary, the more that I really like pins like this. I feel like they take a little bit of getting used to and I feel like my handwriting does not look nearly as good with things like this than it does with like something with a thicker tip more like a um, or, or something like a sharpie you know or something that is like a gel pen that writes with like a thicker amount of gel. I feel like my handwriting just looks better for whatever reason with those types of pens and um, this you know it doesn't look that great. It's not that great at handwriting, but yeah, I don't know. I, I really actually like them. I'm looking forward to using them. They write really nice and the color is beautiful. And I really love the color of this ink blood down here as well. So you guys, so far, very impressed with everything. The only thing we didn't test today is 
the noodle ink, but that will be for another day. But everything else, I really do like. The colors of the Sharpies are maybe not 100% what I was expecting. There may be some colors that I normally would not gravitate towards. I think it's because they were called like Mystic Gems. I think that's why I was like, ew, Mystic Gems. And so I guess maybe I kind of thought that they were gonna be more along like birthstone uh, colors. Mystic Gems? I don't know. Sounds like that Adam Sandler movie. Now that I'm thinking about it, I think maybe Sharpie does have a birthstone gemstone collection as well. So maybe my brain just was not connecting properly that day. I feel like maybe some of those colors I would really use more than others. And uh, that's all she wrote on that. So you guys, let me know if you found the secret item of the day. If you haven't left a like yet, please leave a like. The engagement really does help out. Leave a comment. Tell me how your day is going, what you're doing while you're watching this video. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so, so much for being here, for hanging out, for watching me. And until I see you guys again, which is going to be very, very soon, stay happy, stay healthy, stay sassy, stay banana peppery. I love you guys so, so much. And I will be back again very, very soon.